Hello, this is Devin. I heard you had some questions. Yeah. Um, can Can you hear me okay? I, I can't hear you. Just, I mean, there's a little bit of a buzz, but um, yeah, okay. I can hear you pretty clear. Okay. I've I've got kind of like a big feedback sound on my end. Um, I uh, believe in the Bible, but I encountered some <clears throat> Elvis witnesses re uh, recently that. Uh, um, they were telling me something about Jesus that I had some questions about, and I found this number online. So I just I called a couple Kingdom Halls, and you were the like the third one. You guys answered. I just had I had some questions pertaining to Jesus. I wanted to see if someone could answer them. Okay. Um, yeah. Would you Would you like to do it over the phone, or would you like somebody I could come by and see you, and we could talk face to face? I. I'm actually, I'd like to do it over the phone. I'm, I'm out of state. I'm actually far away from you. Oh, okay. Uh, um, if you don't, you can go ahead and ask your questions, and I'll do my best. I may have to call you back, um, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, do you have a Bible with you? Uh, I do. Okay. Um, could we go to the uh, Gospel of John? Uh, chapter 14. Okay. I'm there, John 14. Okay, uh, verse 6. Okay. Uh, I'll just read it real quick. Uh, it's Jesus speaking, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then John 18:37. You're talking, if no one, if you're saying, uh, yeah, you didn't, on the way, the truth, and light, no one comes to the Father except through me. Correct, yeah. Okay. And then you said John 18. Uh, 37. Okay. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. That's Jesus speaking to Pilate. Yes, the uh, very, the very last part. Of it. Yeah, the very last part of it. I would just, would we agree that Jesus didn't lie then? Uh, yes, I would agree that Jesus didn't lie then. Okay, okay. This, now I'm reading these and asking these in order to clarify uh, what I understood from the other witnesses that I encountered. Uh, the next verse would be. John chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. Uh, yeah, where Jesus is talking about his resurrection. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, I can go ahead and read it real quick if you want. Uh, Jesus, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. Correct. Yeah, he was talking about that, you know, he would be killed in three days, he would be raised from the dead. Okay. Okay, yeah. So we're, we're agreeing there. And then uh, John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. All right, you can go ahead and read. Uh, if you want to come there. Okay. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, basically Jesus, of his own accord, laid down his life. What I'm, what I'm hearing from him in chapter 2 and in chapter 10 of John is that he's saying that he's going to raise up the temple of his body 
and that he's going to take up his life again. He himself is going to do those things. I don't know, would we agree on that? Um, I would agree that Jesus did it of his own accord, but he didn't actually raise himself up. He did it on his father's, you know, he did it because his father wanted him to do it. But he did it on his choice. What do you do with verse 19 of John chapter 2 when Jesus answered to the religious leaders, destroy this, temp this temple and I will raise it again in three days? It was raised in three days. By whom? By whom? By his father. Now we agree that Jesus didn't lie, don't we? I would agree that. Would but... He, I'm, I'm not saying that the father didn't raise the body of Christ, but wouldn't he be lying in verse 19 of John chapter 2 if he said that would raise it again in three days, and he didn't? I would agree that everything he did, he did on his father's accord. And if, if he's saying that he, he, he basically was acting in his father's behalf on everything that's done, and the way it's worded it could be that, you know, he's speaking as, you know, like his father. But if he was truly dead, he couldn't raise himself. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll move on to another uh, chapter and verse because from what I got from the Jehovah's Witnesses here, when Jesus came back from the dead, he didn't come back physically but spiritually. Is that correct? Uh, Yes, because he changed his appearance and rose to heaven at that time. Okay. Could we go to Luke chapter 24, verses 38 through 40? He said Luke 24, 38? Yeah. Uh, where he's, he's there talking to um, Thomas. Yeah. And he shows him his hands and the feet. Right. But uh, would you not agree that if he wanted to have the ability, he could make his hands? If he was spiritual, he wouldn't. He could do what he wanted to. But if he was physical, he didn't look like a walking corpse. His hands could appear how they wanted to and let anyone touch them how they wanted to. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I have problems with that in these verses in that uh, he makes a statement, you know, touch me and see a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Now, it appears that his disciples were thinking that he was appearing to them in spirit at first, but he wanted them to touch him and see that he wasn't a spirit, that he has flesh and bones, which a spirit does not have. And the evidence would be the nail prints in his hands and feet. It would be the same body that died, that died in it. It'd be the physical body. I mean, I, I don't know if you agree with me on that or not. Um, well, go ahead. I, I'm, the last, I'm having, it, the buzz is getting like really, really loud. So I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, in in uh, thirty in verses thirty-eight through forty, it says, "Touch and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have." When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. So it sounds like he's saying to them clearly that they were thinking that he was a spirit, but he's not a spirit, that he has flesh and bones. And also the further evidence that he's showing them the prints of the nails in his hands and feet. 
that's what I'm getting from these passages. I would. I would have to read before and after to see. The point here. I mean, I understand where what you're saying, but I would need to research why he would he said this at this point. I understand. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, I'm I'm drawing a conclusion that he came back physically in the body that he died in, but I have further scripture for that. Uh, not it doesn't end with Luke. Um, I also go to Psalm chapter 16, verse 10. Do you want me to wait for you to go there, or do you want me to just go ahead and read it? Um, give me just a second. I'm pretty quick. You said Psalms what? Uh, let's see here. Uh, 1610. 1610. Okay, I'm there. Okay. Uh, this is from King David. will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Now when we read this in context, in chapter 16, in the Old Testament alone, it could very well seem, we could, we could almost come to the conclusion that David is talking about himself and his own body. But if we go to Acts chapter 2, Verses 29 through 31, uh, Luke will illuminate us on what David was, that that's actually a prophecy of David. He said Luke 2, 39. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 2. Oh, Acts 2, 39. Uh, 29. 29, okay. 31. All right, I'm there. Oh, okay. Um, fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. So, in Acts chapter 2, we're seeing, we're getting a fulfillment of the prophecy in Psalms chapter 16, that the body of Christ would not decay in the tomb. I would, uh, yeah, I mean, it does say that he would not see corruption, but, I mean, it, not everything is literal. I understand. I yeah, you may need some time to look into that prophecy and its fulfillment and what that... Because they didn't find his body, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't changed. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, when I, when I combine that prophecy with Luke 24, 38 through 40, it's saying that he died physically. He went into the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, by the way, who is a member of the um, Sanhedrin, if I remember right, that condemned him. He's one of the people that condemned him. And uh, yet he offered his tomb. He's a wealthy man. Offered his tomb uh, for Christ. And... Uh, his body goes in there, but after his resurrection, it seems to be showing or stating that he's not a spirit, that he has flesh and bones, and that he still has the prints from the nails as evidence, as part of the evidence. In fact, if you read down past uh, verse 40, to further prove it, you can eat a um, piece of uh, boiled fish, if I remember right. I think so, yeah, he does. And then, um, well, I guess this would be a very critical area that I'll go to next, would be 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verses 1 through 8. Fifteen eight. Uh, uh, fifteen verse one through eight. Sixteen. Oh, oh um, I'm sorry. sorry. You said sixteen or fifteen? Uh, fifteen. <laughs> uh, 15. one five. And then you said one through eight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, for me, in my faith, these are the most critical passages because my faith stands or falls on these passages. For me, this is the hole in the heart of Christianity, the fulfillment of Judaism, and uh, the key to all scripture. To me, it's where my salvation comes from. I'll go ahead and read it for you. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll read down to 8, but then I'm going to add in verse 17 on the end, but I'll let you know before I do that. Okay. Now, now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. And then in verse 17, it makes it clear how critical this is. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. So I find it... I find very critical the resurrection of Jesus Christ because on that is salvation is dependent. But what I'm finding in the scriptures, what I find in the scriptures, is that he died, was buried in the tomb, and rose physically. That 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 his physical resurrection fulfills prophecy and that he was evidencing to those who he was revealing himself to after his resurrection that he was physical, uh, even retaining the marks of the nails. Now, I'm, I'm going by scripture on this. I don't know if you, for me, scripture is my final authority. I don't know if you have an authority outside of Scripture that influences no. you. Um, I mean, I like to do research about the Scriptures on different things and different translations and see what, um, and then come to a conclusion. I, I mean, I, I do believe he was raised up spiritual. I would have to look at the, uh, because there, he couldn't return to heaven as a physical body which he did, so... Yeah, he did return to heaven. Um, but glorified. Yes. If you remember, he told Mary not to touch him because he hadn't yet returned to his father. And I do believe, though, that um, spiritual creatures can take physical forms because we have evidence of that in Genesis when the demons came to earth now and they return to their physical their their spiritual form after the flood so how he was actually raised up I mean I, I believe it was spiritual so could he have taken physical form as a spiritual being I do believe so I'd have to do some research on your the David part you're yeah. talking about the corruption but do you have do you have uh, anything to write with? Uh, hold on, I gotta free up a hand. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, uh, I can give you this list of scriptures that we just read through if you want to write them down in order to be able to check them over. 
Okay, go ahead. Uh, we started with John 146. Can you, um, when I'm holding the phone like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me better? Uh, I'm trying to get it to right here. There is a terrible noise in the phone. Okay. I think yeah, okay. I can do better on this here. Okay. Right. Well, thank, and what thank was you. Thank you. Uh, Tim. Uh, Tim. Tim. All right, I'm Devin. Devin? Devin? All right, I'll talk to you. It may, it may be a little bit, but I'll either try to call you back this evening or tomorrow evening. Uh, fantastic. Whenever, whenever you have the time. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. You too. Bye.